¿Cómo se dice? Well, thank you for coming. Um, I'm Daniel Salazar um, uh, in on IRC and those geeky things. I'm Sankudo. Um, thank you. I'm a little bit sick today because of this awesome weather, but <laughs> yeah. So I'm um, uh, my voice. So this talk is about uh, explaining a simple technique that I'm using for the character rigs that uh, we animate in Patas. Patas Studio is a very small two people studio in Costa Rica where I work with uh, Sara. Over there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we started this um, about six years ago. And uh, I was more of a generalist at that time. I, I thought I'd like it to do everything. Like I guess lots of us start like that. Like we can't uh, pick something that we like the most, so we just think we are going to be great at everything. Um, and this is the first thing we did. I and we still like it very much. Um, I mean, it's simple, but probably means a lot to us. Uh, it, no sound, sorry. <clears throat> so, no, just just to you probably have seen it uh, already. Just to show the kind of style that we were developing from the beginning. Very cartoony, lots of curves. You can see the head. There's, I don't think there's a. Um, uh, straight line anywhere <laughs> except from the background maybe um, yeah. they were speaking French so you're not uh, missing anything anyway <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't think uh, this one was ever released. Uh, I, I mean, on any Blender site. So this is probably newish. Uh, it's, it's the same deal. I mean, Also interesting in this uh, project was the need to constantly change um, whatever they had in their hands. And some of you might know that that is harder than it should. Um, so I want to show you a little bit of uh, this character, Riggs. Yeah. For example, this is the um, the little cooker guy. Okay. Yeah, so I basically started doing, you know, what I knew I I could do, and rigged the whole body, and it moved. You know, nothing special and I gave it to the animator. And then I started discovering, you know, the truth about um, rigging, which is you need to um, comply with lots and lots of feature requests 
from the animators and they are a good animator has a vision and it has it, he makes um, drawings and sketches and and you, you somehow need to be able to to produce that so for me this this was actually the first time uh, that uh, yeah that I, I made a rig for somebody else um, so she um, started to ask for things for example we decided to render the scene in an orthogonal camera which is weird but it worked nicely and allow it for for weird tricks for example there there is a scene um, here you can see in lots of scenes from the shot that nothing makes sense except when when you for when you look at uh, from the camera point of view like he is standing may maybe half uh, in between the table and then <laughs> yeah it's uh, and oh and look at him he's um mixing air i guess uh, because the pot is over here so it it was funny but when you look at it from from the correct angle you never yeah you never saw it um so the first thing that uh we needed for this is stretchy arms and limbs for this uh shots we didn't do stretchy legs because they were always below the table and we didn't see them much but the limbs needed to be stretchy and the first thing that maybe some of us think about stretchy is using the stretchy tools in Blender big mistake so this is a stretchy tool uh, a stretchy IK in Blender mm. So add the inverse kinematics, and then there's a a couple of bone parameters with stretchy values in the um, the form I think yep the stiffness thing. So you add it um, like almost to the almost one stiffness, which oh, which means it will ha have just a little stretchiness, but. Uh, And here too. Uh, something like that. And now, uh, well, I, I don't want to lose time. If you configure it correctly, basically you kind of have an IK behavior, but when it uh, reaches the maximum length of, uh, maximum angle of the arm, it starts to stretch. And that is completely useless because when do you need a, a character that has very long arms but only in this position? Like only if you wanted to, I don't know, reach for the door at five meters distance. So that's that's not a stretch uh, uh, IK behavior. So what we did. Um, so that, that, this, uh, at the time is that I started trying different approaches. So this guy has a, an IK arm, like you can see. And I can scale the individual. Oh, this has a, a bug. This, this uh, rig is horrible. It was the first time I did this kind of stuff. So it has many problems. But basically, you could scale each segment, the arm and the forearm, uh, and ideally also the leg and the um, yeah, both uh, below and above the knee. Um, okay. 
So uh, basically, yeah, you can uh, define exactly the length of each segment, and then the IK behavior still works. So you have a bent uh, arm with IK behavior, no matter um, how long it is. Also, another difference is that we, maybe uh, as uh, riggers, we we think it would be a great idea to preserve the volume because you know it's uh, like physically correct to um, when I'm doing a stretchy then I shrink the girth of the arm or when I am um, um, making it smaller I'm making it fatter yeah. Yeah, but that is not correct I mean we can add that functionality uh, to control the uh, the girth of the arms and everything, but that should not be the default because we were using this to to uh, trick poses. So if I go back to here, you will see that this guy has very little arms. They they don't even. Um, hmm. They don't even allow him to reach for the front of his belly. <laughs> but that's what worked at the, in the design phase. So th that is the purpose of a stretchy. It's like allowing stuff uh, that looks good, but is totally not physically correct. So if, uh, if Sarah did a pose uh, like this, like uh, she was uh, cooking something, then the arm needs to grow like two or three times. But you don't notice. Okay, so that's that's the the purpose. It's growing all the time. Guy here has a long hand, etc. Okay. So um, next, there were more requests. For example, if you remember the um, the shirts, we had plenty of deformation in the head, and um, yeah, like curvy, bendy things. In this uh, rig, that was totally hackish, because uh, it's not so nice if you build a rig thinking that you have it all solved, and then you have to add stuff on top. Ideally, everything has to be thought from uh, from the designing uh, stage so that that was really a problem but uh, this is the simple UI so I had to add a couple of top level deformations for example the bendiness <laughs> the rotation and the squash and stretch for the head but since uh, the rig wasn't designed for this at uh, the very beginning, you can see annoyances like now the um, uh, bone controls do not fit anymore. They are left uh, away from the deformation, and you have to kind of animate uh, blindly, like feels like a remote control of something else. It's weird. Mm. But we managed. Um, yeah. Before uh, leaving this this uh, rig file, I just wanted to show you something cool, which has nothing to do with stretchy, but cool. I told you that we had um, lots of interchanging mo objects in the hands, so there are at least um, yeah two ways of doing that. One is using, you know, child of constraints with try to imitate what parenting does, but it can be switched from one to another. There, th now there is a script called dynamic parent, which uh, you should probably check out if you haven't. It's very useful and it, it uses that approach. But we had so many um, props. Mm, I don't think I can see them here. But it's okay. 
that we uh, tested something different, and is the rig, the character file has a very small empty here. Do you see it? So that file, uh, I, that empty is a duplicator, and it has one for the left and right. So this model, this object has dupli group uh, enabled, but it has no group um, accessible yet. So this the UI script defines a a an, an enum property, which is something that um, you use to select between different options in a drop-down menu, and this now can uh, uh, be accessed in the in Python UI. So you, you define this, and these are all the props that uh, belong to these enum uh, properties. Um, this number was also added to for this project, this uh, capability, because before the enum properties, of course, they needed to be animated. For example, left will hold the fork. So now it's it's there. You see it? And, or now it will hold the spatula, but it will be animated, which was great. And, or the cutting board. And you had this, um, oops, this bone that you could, uh, this one, orient and position it to, f to fix the offset in between different objects. So all this can be animated, but um, yeah, Campbell, I think, added a, a feature to add a specific ID so that if you change this list later, it won't uh, offset the animation data. Because this goes to a curb that goes from zero to in, in steps like zero, one, two, three, and each of those are um, related to the list in order of uh, uh, in natural order, you know. But now, uh, if we wanted to add uh, something else, yeah, everything changes. So with these numbers, now it's fixed, and we have a stable um, animation capability. That was cool. Okay, so um, these techniques uh, I've. Simplified them actually. It's cool to see that you can end up with something really simple that works even better than the complicated um, setups. This is what I have now. Uh, this is using the Victor rig for the gooseberry. And I have to mention that this is a layout rig, so it's not like anything fancy. It's ne it needs to work for. You know, like the animatic, but a little step uh, be beyond that with 3D. That's the layout. Mm. Yeah. Going to reset it. So this is the basic pose. Mm. I learned in this project that it is kind of nice to have the hands pointed forward because um, there is no twist already in the pose. <coughs> Pretty much all the rigs I have uh, done had the hands like this, but there is a twist like, fix it already in the model and it's weird because you you have to counter twist it to the other side. It's, it doesn't make sense. If you have, if you have it like this, you have pretty much the same range of motion to one side or the other, so that's cool. So the capabilities of this rig are, uh, stretchy capabilities are, um, the UI is really simple. Um, you have IK, the pole targets, of course, and in the fit, Um, yeah. It's a good idea to parent the pole target to the P 
hit the uh, base so that when it rotates the knee is always pointing where the foot um, two are like with the foot and these are all stretchy and stretchy is just a matter of scaling these bones very controllable and they do not move the um, uh, the feet or nor the hands. The IK remains uh, static. Okay, let's make this way smaller for example. And on top of that you get uh, basically for free a bendy behavior. Which is like this. No. This stuff is lovely. And it looks of course better with subdiv or oh, no. <laughs> Could use a white paper. <laughs> So see, this, these are the basic uh, stretchy capabilities, and I will show you how to do this. Uh, it's very easy. I have prepared a couple of diagrams here to explain how it all basically works. So, I did the diagram uh, backwards. So from the final deformed mesh, what we render actually, uh, backwards to the control setup, you know what the animator pushes. So it's this is the character mesh, and we deform it de deform it with um, a deformation armature. All of these are different objects, which has currently very strong implications in Blender because of the famous, infamous dependency graphs. But it, the system is designed to be okay with that. So this is the deformation armature, which is um, deformed. Actually, there's an arrow missing here. It's deformed partly by a set of curves, uh, which are um, just uh, NURBS paths. I will demonstrate it. And these NURBS paths uh, are deform it with via hooks by the control bones. Uh, this uh, armature is different from that one, and it, it serves two purposes, like uh, its control and mechanism. Some some people call it like that. It's like where you be, um, set up the behavior, all the dynamics, all the IKs, everything. Also, some parts of the deformation armature are linked directly to the control armature. But, uh, and I have another version that I will also show you that is a slightly different because it uses MDEF. MDEF is fantastic, it's, you know the mesh cache modifier? Yeah, it's, um, it's like a lattice, but way more powerful because you model, you model um, a mesh however you want it. Of course, you try to make it simple, and this, uh, mesh volume will deform whatever is inside it. So it's great and it, it not only offers smooth deformation but also a wide array of possibilities to be applied uh, for example directly to the MDEF. If you apply a bendy modifier or something like that, something crazy to this it will work fast and easy and, this, it will, uh, and the effect will get transferred very nicely to the mesh. So, in this case, um, we have the mesh, and the mesh is deformed by two things, the MDEF modifier and the deformation armature at the same time. That's how it works. We will probably get back to these diagrams. Oops. 
So a spline IK, um, spline IK is like this. It's a chain of any number of bones. I like to do four. Like this. On top of that, you have a second object, which I like to use a uh, NURBS path. This um, has some advantages, for example, it doesn't need control points, uh, like handles. You know, the regular BCS that have handles, things, that's annoying for, uh, for animation. So, uh, it, I like to start each curve um, th so that the pivot is located where the first bone of the IK chain is. So here. And also, you can actually delete vertices without breaking anything. And yeah, okay. So I, um, for most of my stuff, I do only one vertex in between. And the important thing with with curves is the order. The order is um, how ma how many vertices does it take into account neighbor vertices to achieve the final curvy effect of this plane. So with three vertices, we can only do three tops, of course. And Blender actually does a trick so that this one doesn't need uh, neighbor vertices, which is, which is this endpoint thing. If you do the curves uh, um, differently, like you add maybe a spline or something, you may have to uh, check this thing or you would need duplicate vertices here because if you want to use order of three, uh, every vertex needs at least uh, two neighbors. You know? So since this uh, chain only represents a small part, for example, the forearm or the arm, I, yeah, I use only one uh, bendy control. It can be two, it can be five, uh, depending on the length of of the feature you are deforming, uh, it doesn't change a thing on on the rig. It doesn't need uh, does not need any special constraints. To very very simple. So that's why I will do it with only one. Okay. So when you have this, you add the IK um, spline IK thing, and point it to the NURBS path and set the chain length to the correct number of bones that it has to affect. And that's it. You, um, you do, not, do, do not want to affect the scaling or um, use even divisions. Really, it's, it's that simple. And now you have the spline IK effect. So oh, this is one segment. Let's do the other. Let's say we have the arm. Let's make the forearm. So I'll duplicate this in the same armature. We are creating a deformation armature. And I'll duplicate the curve too. Okay, it's this NURBS path 01 now. And this guy, I will reset it to the new curve. So now, uh, by controlling two curves, I have both segments. Which is great. This would be the deformation. Um, Part. Now the IK. The IK is, as you, uh, as I show it, a different armature that goes all the way and of course.
course, NEIK needs a slight uh, bend, bending thing, so it uh, doesn't have problems with initial direction. Okay, so add the IK constraint. Oop, did I just do it? Okay. And that should be it. Uh, of course, it needs the pole target, but I won't add that for now. Okay, so now control. For control, it's extremely easy. You need to add a new bone um, for the bending control, I mean. A new bone in the middle of each of these disparents. So, for example, shift S, the fourth uh, option. Add a bone there. This will be the bendy. And another one here. This will be the forearm bendy. And if I use the IK, th they are left behind. But this is extremely easy to solve. Uh, as a general tip, avoid using constraints when you don't have to. If you can use parent to define um, like uh, the first layer of transformation, parents are absolutely safe, of course, but because of how they are done. And constraints are extremely dangerous because they get uh, flips all the time because of how they treat rotations. So I actually found that you can do this without any constraints. Parent, offset, parent, offset. So now you have them lying there and you can scale them and the, um, the scale of the parent bone I mean it is scaling the uh, bendy bone but it doesn't matter because this this will just drive a point in the curve so scales are lost there however it's good to disable inherit scale so if uh, so that your bone doesn't visually grow when the animator uh, scales the bone yeah. just disable inherit scale never use this this option should be taken away and locked in, in a dungeon because uh, basically it does what it says and that's terrible <laughs> in this case the rotations are lost but you cannot define a, a parent so you don't want to to lose all rotations in a rig you need you always need um, a base bone you know the one that it's usually like a big circle that figures put uh, below. You need pretty much everything to to respect that as the main source of rotation and transformation for the entire rig. And with this, that's lost. I will show you a way to to fix that. Also, there's a little problem here. If I scale this, I get a great behavior. But if I scale this, it's inheriting the behavior to this one, so let's disable that one too. Not necessary here, but okay. So we are, uh, with this, that's that's all we need. With this, uh, we are taking advantage of something that Blender does very well, and is uh, scaling the bones inside uh, an IK chain. It works great but it only can be done if you scale the three axes at once. Um, in other programs this might fail or if you use this weird um, um, IK modes it task or some this fails and ugh. But with the standard mode, it works uh, flawlessly, no problem. So you can scale bones with IK chains. But let's see what happens if I scale only one axis. Um, ooh, the IK suddenly fails. And since I mean, we don't want the animator to either 
you know, have two animate three, three values, and if he makes a mistake, it's a terrible problem. I mean, everything breaks. So I'd like to drive this and with a single value. So that's possible, even when in Blender this is a um, dependency cycle. But there's a trick I want to show. <clears throat> so we want to drive the x and z with the y. Okay. So we lock this and we lock this. And um, I'm adding a driver here, single driver. So the way you add a driver is go into driver mode and um, you already have a nice property there and you put it here and then you find the armature which is armature 1 and then the bone which is bone 1, the same. And then, holy, <laughs> um, yeah, the dependencies, exactly. So this is, um, I'm going to do it in the other thing too. Oh, well, I, of course I have to change uh, scale. So Y scale. Mm -hmm. There it is. You see the problem? The values are having a cycle. So if I scale it, it, it is behind. Uh, like I don't know how many frames, but uh, they have different values. And if I um, escape a transformation or undo it, it will fail miserably. So this is why um, transform channel property is most of the time not useful, sadly. Unless you are like copying from another bone or another armature. Uh, the trick to do this is kind of a brute fro uh, force approach. So you do this but with single property and you will go and find all the entire path from the object to the post bone channel. So that updates uh, every uh, on every uh, refresh call and it will work but it's like a brute uh, force approach to do this easily you put a single property find the armature and from there it's a path RNA path copy data path put it here maybe control B ah. There it is. And there's one thing missing, which uh, this is actually the entire vector of three values. So you can do the old, uh, you know, 0, 1, 2. But there's a nice trick that you can do dot y. And that is slightly nicer. <laughs> so, so copy this driver, paste it on set. And now you have perfect updates. This uh, is very stable, it will work. So let's quickly do this for this bone too. Just paste, paste and change the um, hello here. Uh, okay, and change the bone to just bone. Okay, and we solved that problem. Now the animator cannot do this wrong, which is great. Okay, so with that, let's hook it to the curves. If we do that, we have the IK, the stretchy bendy IK thing finished pretty much. So. To make hooks, I'd like to first see the names of everything, which are quite confusing at the moment, but I mean, it's fine for a, for a test. Let's uh, switch uh, layers a bit. Yeah. Okay. 
So to do this, hooks. I used to do like curb empties for a hook and empties parented to the bones, but I found that direct uh, bone hooks work perfect. So use that. Hook. Let's uh, select armature one. I just might go ahead and name this, you know. Uh, def and control. Good. So select the armature control, and we need this uh, a couple uh, one more time. So copy. And because I'm so smart, I copy it after I put control here, so I don't have to do it again. <laughs> Same for this guy. Okay. And you only need two hooks, but there are three points. But that's how the hooks work, which is nice. So, let's see. Enter edit mode. Oh no, okay. Enter edit mode, then select the two um, vertices at the end, and, and now we pick the bone called bone, which is the main IK thing. Uh, assign, reset. Then we pick the center one and assign it to the bendy thing is bone 3. Assign reset. Let's get out and test he this. Yes, working and nice. Okay, we do this exact same thing with the other curb. So only one, uh, one and two hooks needed. This would be bone uh, 1, assign reset. And then like the other vertex, bone four, assign, reset. Should be automated somehow. And perfect. Okay. There we go. IK behavior. Scaling. And let's enable the other armature. Hey, wake up. Okay. Good. Uh, I also did the mistake of, uh, at first, of using a single um, IK, um, like in this case it would be an 8 bone uh, spline IK thing from here to here. And that should be fine, but there are two problems with that. What? Okay, there are two, a couple of problems with that, and it's basically this the way the spline IK is designed to work, and that's the cool thing, uh, is that it slides. So if I grab this control, you see that I am not actually changing the sizes of the bones too much. The, the, they remain like in the same um, length as long as they possibly can, and the curve just makes them slide, like this. So what this means is that with the bendy behavior and the different scales, imagine it, imagine that the elbow is here, and I make this bone larger, and the curb just slides, so I have the elbow here, <laughs> which is a problem. So the approach of doing it with two segments solves that. The elbow will always be there, and I have also independent control of, of bendies. It could be very useful to do to bend this. I just haven't done it. Okay, so this is the basics. Now there's a trick in Blender which is called um, Bezier Bone, which was added by Ton, I think, a long, long time ago. Um, yeah, Bibon. Yeah, they stand for Bezier Bone, which, hmm? yeah. <laughs> Okay, 
So there are a couple of nice things. I, at first I was like, oh, too many objects, you know, two armatures, I don't like that. Or I like that, but in Blender it's, mm, it's messy because uh, after you do that, you are uh, completely limited between uh, to not hit a dependency cycle. This graph basically means that these uh, arrow directions cannot be, I cannot have an arrow going this way. If you uh, have a direction, you can never ever go the other way. Even if it's for a single UI thing, like if I wanted to place a bone where these splines are, but I want to do, a, do that here, I would need this direction. And that's a cycle. So it's uh, totally not a load for now, but the Blender developers are working hard on this. It's a really complex issue. So yeah, using curves and, and two armatures was at first a workaround, but I found it very useful now. You can set the entire armature to B-bone. Uh, this is, does nothing, this is just a display type, but it's needed to see what I'm going to do next. So you set B-bones basically just subdividing the bones here in the, under the form. Set them to, I don't know, four segments, depending on, on the length of them. I encourage everyone to use this add-on called copy something by Basam. Copy attributes. It's great because you can then copy lots of stuff like b-bone settings, constraints. Extremely useful. And now let's, let's try the IK chain. Oh, I'm missing my pole target there. Oh well. Mm -hmm. So you see, there's some um, kind of a disconnection between these two segments. But the cool thing is that we can actually parent them, even connected parenting. And connected parenting is. What is that? There's a there's an error there. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Connected parenting is what you need to uh, achieve Bezier bones being totally smooth, because if they don't have a parent, a connected parent, they don't know how to smooth the the start position, or if they don't have a connected child, they don't know how to smooth the end position. So you need that. And so every, with this technique, you can do uh, all the, the bones connected. There must be a problem somewhere, so I'm get running out of this file and switching to a um, better one. <laughs> yeah, uh, Since that's basically the, the, the whole technique, I'm going to show it here. The weight paint for this is terrible, it's working for us. Okay. There's a slowdown here at the moment, which is caused by vertex parenting, sadly, when using subdiv. I'm going to have to get rid of this for now. So now it's, uh, it's fast again. Okay. Okay, this rig has everything and also has um, IK and FK switch, which basically switches the layers here. Uh, IK is uh, a different chain than FK, and then there's a third bone that, uh, a third chain that is actually, yeah, Sesen's DVD has all of this. So this is the deformation, the, the control armature, and I can show you here the uh, full 
deformation armature. So here is when it, it all starts to make sense. Because if you check closely, you see that almost the entire armature is made of a single or actually very long chains of bones. The entire legs uh, up to the, the feet are a single chain. And the entire arms from the clavicle to, to the hands are also a single chain. And that's also uh, all, only possible, same with the head, from here to the head, single chain. Uh, that gives us a lot of advantages with Bessier bones. You know, you see this uh, slight bendy behavior that we get basically for free. This is only be possible because we are using two armatures. So, uh, the spline effects are copying, um, are using the curves for deformation, but the other bones, for example, these, uh, these ones do not have a spline. No, doesn't matter. I, I still duplicate them from the control armature and uh, put the duplicates in here. And all of them are green because they are using a copy transform uh, constraint to basically just mirror whatever this same bone is doing in the control armature. So this is a uh, chest bone and here I have chest bone. Copy transform was made to do this. It's, it is almost like parenting because it copies the entire matrix of transformation or yada yada and it avoids any rotation flip. You can use it safely. And yeah, I think rigging in Blender is knowing what, what is safe and <laughs> what is not. Because so many things break. Uh, for example, the child off will flip. Uh, even, uh, yeah, if it, there's no way that you can make it not flip. Um, copy transforms does not flip unless you use influence lower than one. So this is not fa uh, safe, yes? Yeah, the constraint system is based on, it works internally with the matrix transform, and, but the problem is that to make the constraint work, they s constantly switch between different rotation um, models. And switching between different rotation models creates a loss of information, and this is what causes the flips. So, yeah, well, what I can tell you is copy transforms is very safe as long as you don't lower the influence. So leave it at one. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they will start. I will, uh, okay. Yeah, that, that is something I have to show you in this demo. Uh, just a second. He was asking about, if some of you didn't hear, he was asking about the spline. Uh, splines are at the beginning only affected by the curved shape. So that looks fine if you do a simple test like this. But if, when you rotate the character like this, they aren't uh, getting rot uh, rotation values from anywhere. I mean, uh, the hooks from the control armature are just moving, changing the positions of the points in the curve, and the curve is changing the the positions of the bone in the spline IK. So rotations are nowhere to be found there. So you have to do something, yes. Okay, so to, to end this, uh, all of these are straight from the curve, and these are copies from with copy transform but in this um, in this armature you join everything yes no 
Like a When you pull it more than you should? Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would be yeah, that this uh this uh feature is not implemented here. So that would be an another thing to consider. But uh, we've never, I mean, for I guess for manual animation, the animator tries to not hit that point. I'm not so used to that. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, because if uh, the animation is done by by someone directly, you just don't don't do that. <laughs> yeah, but I I guess you're right. For mocap, you need a stronger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's let's just finish this because there's something interesting that I haven't gone uh, about the um, how to mix the mesh catch and modifier. So that's the last thing. Okay. The orientation. Let's answer the this uh, guy's question. You see here. You see here. Uh, the entire armature is made. Uh, it consists only of deformation bones, which is great, and it has performance benefits and all because this, this uh, armature only deforms and does not need any mechanism bone. You don't need to select which of those bones are for deformation, which are not, which are just for looks. This armature is what, are, what deforms the, the mesh, except for this guy. And this guy is precisely added here to solve the rotation issue. It's very simple. This is a copy of the base bone. The base bone uh, actually has the same shape, just the uh, custom shape makes it look a bit different. But uh, you see how this vertical bone moves exactly the same? So this guy has a copy transform pointing to the base. And that's it. Uh, since I, I remember I told you this is totally safe, no flips. Basically, you have a copy uh, of, of the bone. And then you parent the start of every loose chain to there. So, for example, this guy is parented. I don't know if you can see the lines there. Well, this guy is simply parented to this, to this. And this guy should be too. And this guy too. There are lines from all over the rig to this guy. And since the parent goes first, the constraints come, come on top of the, well, on top and I do below. Uh, yeah, because Blender is like the other way around. But uh, parenting is first and then go the, the constraints one by one. So if you parent something and, and you have to move it, doesn't matter because for example, if the spline moves it, or the IK moves it, or something, or uh, like this. Re remember that this was parented to this, so it's strange that it follows, you know, something else. But it's just at the order of the constraints. This one is overwritten by the, the splines and stuff like that. Um, but that initial orientation still remains. And that is what makes it safe to do any crazy rotations. I recommend don't do the same uh, error that I did when I was testing rigs. Uh, I was like, uh, yeah, it works. Sure, no flips. Very careful not to do like a, even a 180 degree thing because I knew something was wrong. Well, no, there's no way around it. I mean, you have to flip it around and rotate it and move it one kilometer over there and see if the MDEV it's accumulating an error of precision and stuff crap like that. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's clear. Because we're entering something a little weird. 
So yeah, this uh, rig for um, for Gooseberry is uh, basically that's it. But I have another version here which uses MDEF. And MDEF poses a, a different challenge. So as this diagram shows, MDEF is deformating or is deforming <laughs> sorry this mesh. Uh, but also the deformation armature is deforming this mesh. Why? Because MDEF works for big pieces, big chunks of of um, polygons. If you have um, uh, it, it works even better with uh, like but characters, because that's what it's made for. It's like it gives great deformation. But then you get to the fingers, and there's no way sometimes because sometimes they are just so close, uh, it's just uncomfortable to to um, create a mesh, uh, a deforming mesh that goes all over the details, so we can you know move them independently. So Riggers started to do a, a technique, which is a blend, a weight paint blend between the, the two of them. So this this works. Uh, it, it's like this: if you have the character with a mesh deformer <laughs> over, <laughs> thank you, with the mesh deformer ending here, then you can rig the hand directly with the armature and this part you blend it it's like a fade okay so you use the same vertex group and then invert it on the other modifier and this way you get uh, thank you only one transform for each uh, vertex because if you get more than one or less than one you uh, this vertex will go crazy so this is one way but uh, what I like to use is what I like to do is use this guy and apply crazy effects on top of it because it's a, an opportunity that you shouldn't miss. Just a second. Um, with this uh, approach, you cannot just add a wave modifier on top of this guy and then you have the character doing this. You can't do that because everything breaks. So what I did is using the dynamic um, approach and instead enclosing those parts with a cage. So it's like a, a box that it basically gives up here. It says, okay, I want to do the details here, so I will just enclose, enclose it. It's like big cage. The position of, of this cage is very important. It has to go after the IK um, target. O otherwise, uh, I did that mistake on the Caterpillar for Gooseberry teaser. Uh, it didn't matter much because it was like four seconds, but I did that mistake in, in making a huge cage like for the entire sets of feet. So that uh, made it impossible to create IKs for feet. And Sarah had to counter animate a bit. Um, yeah. So reach the IK point and then make the cache. And what's happening here is it's very cool. Uh, if you see it here, it works. The hands work. Everything is nice. Uh huh. You can. Crazy here, um, and until here, this is all MDEF mesh modifier. But this is direct armature transformation. So, oops, so we have problem there. Okay, this is direct armature transform.
Da, da, da. And the bones are there and it it seems kind of logical, but it's not because if you deform uh, I, I, I told you that I am moving the entire hand with this cage. So what happens if I move the entire hand with this cage, but I also move it move some parts of it with a bone. And this bone was moved to this position. I, I'm not sure if I need to explain that again. The bones that move the um, the fingers also have to move with uh, the entire hand, right? So they are in this location, but uh, but I already moved the hand there. It's already there. It's a double transformation. That's the problem. So these fingers would go like pff, explode uh, and go a uh, kilometer on top of him. So what is is it doing is again making use of the fact that we have anyway a copy of the armature. So we have it for free. We have the copy uh, here and the hand we left it behind and it's like a remote control. So it is uh, just a slightly different. This is not uh, copying, uh, is, this is using world transformation constraint, but not in world space, just local space. And that's it. We copy, um, we copy this uh, guys. And you see that the finger uh, below, it just moves there. This uh, is the uh, the formation armature. No, this one is the control armature. So it's a it's a copy, but the okay yeah just a, the transfer is slightly different, so that they are left behind. So if, if this is easy to understand when you see one step at a time. If I th this guy has two modifiers working on top, so first armature. Armature does only the fingers, and like that, perfect. And on top of that, we move it. However, the pose it is, I don't care if he's doing this. I move all of that to another position with the and the and uh, this uh, this way. It has the advantage that. Uh, uh, since the control armature is uh, in the correct position, it looks like they like they match, even if the fingers are there because of the MDEF and not because of the armature. Yes. Sorry. No, no, no. In in this uh, case, I'm using the dynamic. Uh, I forgot to mention that this is a dynamic bind. So a dynamic bind is essential for this uh, use case because uh, you see that the MDEF is below the armature. So this means that the effect is added on top of whatever the first armature deformation is giving it. And only dynamic allows that. If not, static deform, uh, static MDEF is a, a slightly faster, but uh, it needs a base position that is kept like that. If I were to do this, like change the pose of the hand, then the deformation will do something weird. <laughs> yeah, because uh, it expects uh, the pose to be fixed. It um, um, how it works is that the the weighting th this this calculates a kind of weighting, but it's volumetric and it's awesome and it's fancy. But basically, the fixed version uh, calculates it uh, all statically. It is almost like if you have a thousand bones and regular weight painting, and this one doesn't. It keeps this uh, volumetric deformation field. It becomes. It behaves more like a lattice, which is great. 
So you can do all kinds of stuff, and as long as the fingers do not leave this enclosure space, it's safe. That's how, so you see that the, I don't even use vertex groups to to mix between both because it's not necessary as long as you don't do double transformation. That's it. <laughs> I think that's that's the technique. Good. Thanks. Yes. So the mesh space is imposed by the D4 armature. Uh, sure, absolutely. Yes. Yes, yes. And what's the the uh, advantages of the mesh case? Do you see better for the nice D4? Um. Yeah. This uh this entire part is deformed by this single hand bone. So it, the chain is uh, the actual chain is kind of simple. Uh, it goes with the arm and then one bone for this cage. Uh, the advantages are many. As I said, you can well, it's like this. I wish I could draw with a pilot there, but I would get in problems. Anyone can go. I mean, I I think I, I'm over. The hour or mm, no, it it has many advantages. Imagine, imagine if you have this character, a character that has uh, maybe a spine. So we we will represent the spine with cubes. Okay, so little cubes here and here, and we will parent them object parenting. Okay, so if the cubes were to be very, very slim. Like this, this could work. But you see, there there is a slight interpenetration on the borders. So what if the cubes were just a bit um, thicker? Whoa! Now the interpenetration distance grows with distance. Um, So if you think it this way, that is the problem with a chain of bones that is uh, made from the, the center of a character. Because it's basically parenting vertices, that's all. Of course it has blending and all, but it's basically parenting vertices. And it's moving them like this. And sadly, uh, the armature modifier lacks any way of Calc of uh, simulating the collisions that are in our body. No, this doesn't happen in our body because it's physically impossible, but in 3D it does. Uh, so the, the way that the cage does it is uh, mm -hmm. is that it will deform the cage it is big like this so now you have a deformation field that has a volume and from this volume you deform what's inside and there is a smoothing implied in here if you think about it if I move these two vertices um, and the deforma the final mesh is very close to the edge. They will pretty much follow whatever I do here. But if the deformation mesh is just a little bit inside, 
they will not follow exactly what I do here, but if the deformation field starts to smooth uh, when it, uh, it's like a, a heat thing. Imagine if, if one, each of these vertices glowed red or glowed heat. So if you are inside here, you feel the heat of many little points. And if you're right next to the vertex, you only feel that. So there is a smoothing implied in, in how you use this. And that is why uh, you can control the type of bending effect that uh, you get with MDEF just by varying the distance between the cache and the final mesh. So if you want, for, for example, a very, um, a very not a smooth uh, elbow movement, you make the cage there very tight. But then on the belly, you might want to leave some space, leave a gap. And, and you have this smoothing implied. Uh, and of course, the, uh, this is what uh, everyone uses, but I've uh, come to like very much to use effects on top of MDEF. So it is, um, oh, also, uh, just a second. The volumetric thing is it's just so important because uh, characters are not uh, like a single, you know, smooth mesh, sadly. They have buttons and they have something hanging and they have, yeah, I want to forget <laughs> the word. Uh, they have um, sleeves and maybe just like this. This is nightmare to weight paint because uh, you will never uh, make it so perfect that whatever you do, they remain at, uh, the same. It starts to offset. With a volumetric approach, this is not a problem. You can have uh, even uh, buttons or whatever object there. And uh, since the deformation field is so simple, the deformation field is uh, smooth and doesn't have any of these problems. So whatever it deforms, it follows perfectly. So that's the second huge advantage of, of this approach. Yes? Uh-huh. Like for the twist effect? Yeah. It will flip. Yes. Yeah, oh, there are so many reasons for that. Um, if you try to... Um, as I said, if you try to use constraints with less than 100% effect, there's a flip there implied. Uh, so if you use the constraint approach of just uh, blending to 50%, so it, the, it goes midway, that's the safest, <coughs> safest way would be to use drivers as I showed in the beginning. Uh, prop, uh, the full path and accessing the Euler um, I set set it set them all to Euler, and access the Euler uh, value directly. That's an access in in radians, so you can do a simple math division by two or something, and you get it. But that only works with FK chains because IK IK is more problematic. Uh, there is another problem with Blender constraints. Terrible. Um, the, uh, the drivers do not have access to the constrained value. So if, if, um, if you're driving things uh, according to the rotation of an arm and that this rotation was given it by, to it by, by IK, you, you cannot have access to that. 
Uh, that's a problem. So it, it can uh, be problematic with the rotation of the hand. We've had uh, lots of issues with that and we end up sol solving it differently each time. So if you see the, um, actually <laughs> we did the tricks on this guy. Uh -huh. These guys have a twist bone. Oh, oops, with no flips because because it it is just one axis in Euler, and <laughs> basically uh, they uh, rotate in the indefinitely since they are so cartoonish. And Zara actually used this in animation. There's a part when I'm not sure I can show it here. I don't have it. Oh man, yeah, yeah, maybe I have. There's a funny part where she used this. In the second video. Should be... Oh, yeah, there it is. This is the hand of this guy. Wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah, all the time is, is use it and of course you don't see it. There. <laughs> but it was used uh, all the time, just not so it was not so visible. Um, yeah, I've I've done many variations, and I have to say, it uh, rotations are a problem. Where well, they are always difficult, but in Blender with the constraint system that you can can't reliably use, it's even more difficult. So I'd say try to use it only with drivers set everything to Euler and try to solve it that way, more direct. Yes? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> no, no, you go ahead. Uh, my question was, was solved. Okay. <laughs> uh, along the way. You were talking about uh, adding deformers uh, for effects to yeah. the deformation mesh. Could you give an example of one? Sure. Um, yeah, I have some here. Yeah, it's it's always useful to have the uh, this this uh, secondary level of deformation possible. For example, here, or actually in here. Okay, this rig has what? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Password thing. <laughs> oh, great. That was easy. This, uh, maybe I pressed uh, the wrong button. This character has the mesh, then the control, then the cage, then some lattices. And then the hands. This is, was a slightly different approach. But for example, I'm using a lattice to deform this guy. So it's like <laughs> 20 levels of deform. I don't know, but the lattice deforms the cage, and the cage deforms the mesh. Exactly. That's what they do. Yeah. And this is uh, actually a shape key that the shape key is added to the lattice, and this lattice is uh, no, it, it runs fast because especially it runs fast because the the slow part is this. That's why I'm trying to speed up uh, mdef because if but applying effects to the mdef it's almost free because the mdef is so simple. That if you wanted to apply this lattice to to the mesh. And you end up end up adding so many like a curve modifier or a simple deform modifier, and all of that goes directly to this mesh. That's heavy. But when you have uh, already this simplified mesh, and you add effects to it, it's fast, it's reliable, it's smooth, and it works together with the entire rig. So that's, that's a great advantage. It also, uh, yeah, do you see that it also has the simple deform modifier 
which is being used by the bendy effect. To the lattice in this case, the lattice uh, had a couple of squash and stretch things. <laughs> I mean, this this was a hack. Uh, as I said, this rig, I, I didn't thought of all of this before. It was just that Sarah started asking things. But the MDEV saved the day in, in this case because it's, it's so easy to deform it. And even, I, even if you uh, add shape keys, direct shape keys to this guy, to achieve a very special effect, it, it all works with the entire rig. And your shape key went outside of the depth mesh? No, because you add the shape keys to the deformation uh, to this guy, and it's impossible to, I mean, after they are they are binded, everything you do to this guy deforms whatever is inside, so you, can, you can't get, go outside or inside, <laughs> like uh, that is. Yeah. Also, an another great thing of, of uh, this is that you can't make you can make changes, like heavy changes to, to this character, even after the rig is, I mean, like 100% done. And I'm like, sure, give it to me, and I rebind. That's it, because all the heavy weight painting work is done here, not here. So another very good. Okay, thing. you don't weight paint the whole body. No. Uh, besides the fingers. Exactly. Yeah. Only, only the fingers. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, do you feel if the build uh, dependency cycle problems is finite? Because I was always avoiding it. Also, like when I was playing scrolling the animation, it was always lagging, and I remember. No. no. Yeah. Uh, of course, there there is if if you um, don't follow the rule of arrows only in one direction. So. Uh, Actually, I wanted to do something cool that I couldn't. Mm -hmm. For example, here I wanted to have a bone uh, the only for display. Like this, this armature had some kind of shape here that gives me the um, the final shape of the uh, bone chain, but that's that's not possible. That would be a cycle because I would need to get that information from the deformation uh, rig, which is this one. Yeah, in oh, oh, yeah, oh, sure, no, no, oh, that's of course. Yeah, yeah that problem is because you, you did it all in a single armature. So you are creating the cycle um, like this. What you did is have these splines, and then they deform the armature. But this armature is the same as this one. So you have arrows going both ways. OK? Because you, even if you have different bones, like the control armatures have some bones that deform the splines, and the splines deform other bones. But these two are the same armature. So Blender is stupid and says that there's a cycle. Because, well, for Blender, there is, but shouldn't, but there is for now. And that, that, this, that, is, this, that is what I explained it. Uh, at the beginning, I, did this, uh, I used two armatures just because of that problem. But then I started to discover nice things about having a separate armature. So this is the whole thing. Okay, I think I've talked enough. Thank you very much.